all right friends <laughs> welcome back to another video as you can see we're in a different space today we're in a body yard <laughs> asanya i'm you know i'm in my room if the curtains look familiar and i decided that i'm going to do you know something more intimate today a little sit down vibe a sit down energy so i decided that i'm going to speak about my medical journey so you know a little bit of backside into or insight rather of how i got into the, the field of medicine, how I got into medical school, and how my experience has been so far, right? So for those of you who are new, welcome to the channel. I am Romy Donaldson. On YouTube, on Instagram, I have the King Enthusiast platform where I speak about fashion, lifestyle, my life as a medical student, as a young entrepreneur, and just me, all that good stuff. So, a bit of an insight. I decided that I wanted to become a practitioner when I was in about the fourth grade, so very young, nine, ten years old, I said I want to become a doctor, specifically a pediatric neurosurgeon, right? So from that point onwards, I've been on that journey to medicine. So, you know, prep school, GSAT, all that good stuff, I passed at Cornwall College. Big up CC for life. Went through Cornwall, high school was, academically, it was fine. Always in the top of the class, good grades, all that good stuff. Fast forward to about the 11th grade now, when I sat my c -sec subjects. So I think I did about, I think it was 11 subjects that I did. And out of those 11, I got two threes. And those two threes were in my, my core subjects, which would have been, for bio, I got two. So for physics and chemistry, I got three, right? Which is fine. Three is a good grade. But for my father, that not really cut it. And so... When I saw my results, I was, I was abroad at the time, I, like a million emotions started to run through my mind and I think my biggest fear was, was not even like the grade because the grade was fine. It wasn't the grade that I wanted but it was fine, you know, I would live. My fear was more of telling my father that I got a three in my course subjects. No, my daddy loves me to his heart. I know that, right? However, when it comes on to academics, he does not play. And because of that, I always work and push myself to the extreme to ensure that I'm always at the top just so I feel that he can be proud in a sense. I never want to be a disappointment because I know how hard he works. Though I know that I'm not a disappointment because, you know, I always try and I get good grades. But in this instant, I was, I was very down and I called him and he was fairly okay. When I came back to Jamaica now, I didn't know it was closer to school time and... I applied for I applied for come see but something did go wrong with that so I'm just scrap that. But the next plan was for me to go to sixth form in Kingston, and I didn't get into that school that I applied for. So at this point, my my other option was Cornwall. I applied for Cornwall as well. I miss it. Okay. So eventually, I think I did my interview for Cornwall on like the Friday, on like the Wednesday. Got in Friday and did have to go by uniform and stuff over the weekend to start school the following week. And my father was looking at me like, well. You know, you never do too strong pan, pan your core subjects. So, are you sure that this is what you still want to do going forward? And I said, yes. I feel that this is my calling because everything else that I already want to do as it relates to, like, my passion, the fashion and the business and the clothing and the style and all that, I'm already doing that. So, I feel that this is, like, the next thing for me, you know, to start this path. And he said, okay, fine, you know, start six from at Cornwall. Went through grade 12, big adjustment from 5th form into 6th form. However, you know, I was doing well, the grades were fine, was really applying myself. When I got my results now, I think I got, I'm going to look at 4. I got 3s, 2s, yeah, I got 3s and 2s. I mean, I said, okay, still not like, not what I wanted because, you know, I was really trying to like recover from the grades I got before to try to get better grades going forward. And my father was fairly okay, never too ec ecstatic, I mean. He wasn't too ecstatic. I'm say, all right, grade 13, no, I'm still going to push myself and, you know, really try harder because I really want these grades if I can even get a scholarship to go to university. Fine. Amazing. Go through grade 13 and I tried so hard. Like, <laughs> I tried so hard. And when I got my result, I think I got fours in all my course subjects except Carib where I got a one. And I was looking at, this, at the results like, so what am I supposed to do myself No, <laughs> Because... If if me I get three in a C sec, which is a pass, and my father I look at me like 
and me come in a cape and me get four. Like, why God said to me no? So me did it, did it, did it, and me don't know what to do with myself. So eventually, I called him and we had a conversation. He said, okay, Romy, fine, we'll discuss this. I think the day came now when I was supposed to go, go to the embassy, go to the embassy in Kingston to get my Chinese student visa. And he was bringing me there. And he said, honestly, Romy, these grades, you know, these are not the standard for, this is not a standard for medicine. I mean, though I already got into medical school, like from before my unit one and my C6, so if he said, you know, you're going to have to re work very hard and really apply yourself to ensure that, you know, you can manage. So, you know, these grades aren't really a good determining factor for you to be moving forward. And I said, honestly, that you understand, but like, this is still what I want to do. So I said, all right, fine. Board the bus, go to embassy, get through for the visa. When me depart, when me at nooks for now, I'm going to come back to my baby. My father called me again, like, like him go sleep, like him go med span it and come back him and say, honest room me, like these grades are not it and I don't feel comfortable like really sending to medical school if this is how you're going to be performing. And guys, me tell us, like, I don't get very emotional about most things, but grade, me take them very seriously. <laughs> grades, me be bad for grades and like, I didn't know what to do with myself because at this point I applied for a lot of programs at UE. I applied for law, I got in and I declined. So I said, okay, fine. I applied for medical fees, but I never hear back from them. And some business, I, I got through for things, some other jobs, science stuff, and me never accept. So my thing was all right, I already paid money for China, you know, me go embassy, me get show, spot secured, and all the things just for me to show up. And my father said, yo, honestly, like, Mm -mm, Romy, me not feel this. So, me go back, the family go back, I'm up here now, and me don't know what to do with myself. Like, Asanya was there with me the day, and Noel, and they could have seen emotion in my eyes. Like, me they just want ball, but me never want to show myself in the public. And I went home, and for days, I was in my room because I was I did stop working at the time because it was close at the time for the time to leave, so I just stopped working. I'm in my room, and I'm just a ball. I'm just a prayer, and I say, God, let your will be done. But honestly, Father, I feel like this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is my calling. And I was in my room one day, and I think my biology teacher called me. She taught me for unit one and two. Go up into the right there, so is that okay? No, I don't okay, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> not talk over. <laughs> so my biology teacher called me, and she said, Honestly, Romy, I think you should request a remark because even speaking to your teachers and your ACB grades and mock exam, everything going forward, we don't feel like you got the grades that you deserve. And I say, honestly, miss, at this point, I'm here, I'm gonna know what go on for me because my father not feel it at all. And you know, if you could like try to call both of my parents and talk to them because even my mother was trying to talk to me. I mean, she's my parent, she's supposed to. And I was not, me never want to talk to nobody, like, me just lock up in my room because I was really going through it because Fissy said me tried so hard and to feel that every year the grades just got worse and worse. And it was just the exam grades because the class grades were fine. I just felt very like my lowest point. Anyways, teacher called my parents. I told her not to tell them that, you know, I asked her to. And she did. And, you know, eventually my daddy came around. And I recall, I think he was even two days before I was supposed to come to China. And I was talking to my father and he said, Honest Romy, I still don't feel this, but I'm going to give you the opportunity. Because I feel that this is what you say you really want to do it. And he said, okay, fine. I said, Father God, thank you very much. <laughs> I have the opportunity. Now I have to go to China and really prove to myself that, you know, I can really do this. Because at that point, I think from that moment onwards, to me, it was more of just ensuring that I can do this, pushing myself to ensure that I get the grades. At this point, it wasn't any more about pleasing my parents or my, my, my mommy, my daddy, family, anybody. It was more about me because we get the opportunity now in a med school, right? So I need to stay in a med school. So I came to China and I started my program and wasn't easy. Like, didn't expect it to be. It was, it was a big adjustment, especially being in a new environment where you have to be learning Chinese as well. So we do as much Chinese as we do our core subjects, our medical subjects, right? So balancing all that I'm going through was, was a big adjustment. But first first semester, it was okay for the most part, right? Got my, my results and my grades, my grades were fine, right? I didn't, some of them weren't what I wanted them to be, but I was okay. And when I had the conversation with my daddy, he was fairly okay with them as well. Mr. said, all right, fine, you're on, the, you're on the right path, right? So first semester finished in like January, let me look at vacation, come back. Then there was the Miss Virus, Miss Pandemic, right? 
And that's where all hell broke loose as it relates to academics. So we were here for a good while, no school near the keep, and then eventually, you know, we started the online classes. So when we eventually started back second semester now, you know, the online classes were progressing well and they felt fine. You know, we're going through and I could wake up every day and I do my classes, you know, I get up and I, I dress up and I sit at my desk because, you know, I didn't want to be too comfortable in my own space. So I tried to create the feeling that I was actually, you know, at school. And the semester was progressing until I reached like maybe halfway through, almost at the end. And guys, my body just broke down. Like I couldn't, I wasn't eating, I couldn't study, I couldn't read, and I just had a massive headache. I mean, I said, no, Father God, I want this now. Imagine, I'm telling all of me go through, I'll go for even reaching a medical school, go through my first semester of year one, in my second semester now, I must finish, and my body just crash. I was trying to balance my studying and my look at YouTube and you know time management on key. I mean I tell the same I couldn't I couldn't do anything. All I could do was just lay in my bed. I mean I said and I was praying, I was praying, I was praying, I mean I said, God, please send me out of this because we cannot come so far. Jamaica they're very far from China. If you just can't come out to now, when we go back to Jamaica, what me go to now? You understand? So me I said, okay. I went to the doctor and I think I went to the nurse here on campus. And them say maybe I need to get more rest, maybe I'm not sleeping enough, I should watch it and see how my headache feels. Come on, I'll say, okay, rest. Never feel no better. Go back again now, them I say, okay, fine, you recommend I go to the hospital. Go hospital and end up saying never even get to see nobody. That was a other story by itself. I'm come home now, I'm say me go pray again, I'm say, Father God, please bring me through this. Honestly guys, like I'm the left door just going up on my knees and just ball. Because me never, I, even if I opened a book, I couldn't read one sentence and remember what I was reading. I mean, I tell us yeah, almost exam time. Me need for a study. Like me just me not talk to nobody. Me there by myself. Like not even my parents. Me not want to talk because me just did feel like overwhelmed and like I was at my lowest. And I think one day I was sitting and I messaged my Chinese teacher, and I messaged my sister as well. I think something happened today in Chinese class. And I was saying to my teacher about it, like, I'm not a bad student, but when it is that I fail or don't get the grade that I think I should get, I start to beat up myself. And I have this whole imposter syndrome thing, like, should I even be here? Am I worthy enough? And that's something that I'm trying to work on. So I had that conversation with her and my sister as well. And they were really just saying, like, Rumi, you're here for a purpose. And it's just, we all know that you can do it. It's just for you now to know that you have this within you. And I think it just sparked something in me because you know all the time people say oh you can do it and you can do it But you see a lot of times like when you're at what you would call your lowest and somebody starts to speak life into you I think it's it kind of creates like a different perspective It's like it's like a wow moment Because you say okay, you're looking at yourself in this different light now and I prayed You hear me I talk about prayer often I, I went on my knees and I prayed and I said father God I'm really going to try to bring myself through this because I can't stay here forever and if I stay at this point I go feel the exam then, I now go pass so I need to at least try study and do something and little by little I started to you know I started to journal again and try to speak more to like my sister and to my parents because for, for a while they not even know what I because I never tell anybody I was just trying to work through my thing by myself and I started to pray more and eventually I felt I felt more energy to say okay I'm going to push and I'm going to study and you know as exams as exam time came around even though like I did try my best I know that it wasn't my hundred percent because my brain wasn't there like 100 percent but I really did try you know even for Chinese I felt short a little bit with my grade because I wanted a 19 I think I got like I got near that but I never get it and I was beating myself up and eventually I just said you know what for you to even be able to do these exams is a win and that's a plus because of where you were before and I pushed through and I was able to do all my exams and they went well for the most part right but I decided to share my story not even you know for the hi welcome to my channel all of that but I feel that it's very real and for me to come to come on a platform like YouTube and to say I want to be authentic and to be my true self then I feel that it's important for me to share you know not just me playing games with my friend Asanya or coloring my hair but really speaking about other other part other parts of my journey like me being a medical student and 
you know the importance of mental health and and all of that so some of my takeaways from this video for you guys are a lot of times we're at some really difficult points in our lives some dark points and we feel that it's really things that we can't talk about or that we can't express but let me tell you guys there's always light it's something that's really easier said than done but there's always light or there's always someone there who can speak life into you what I'm going to try to do for this video is to maybe try to put some links or even some Instagram sites or some websites where you can go and you find people who are like-minded who maybe be going who maybe are going through the same things who can share motivational posts or stuff like that being a medical student is very difficult guys and you realize especially once you start you realize where mental health is so important if it's even scheduled scheduling time to say okay I'm going to take a walk today if I even 10 minutes may I tell you say you need it if it's even say okay I'm going to go grab some ice cream with my friend or drink up drink some water with my friend always schedule time for things that make you feel more whole and more at ease because you're going to need that level-headedness and that peace of mind as you really progress through medical school some of my takeaways <laughs> from first semester no you know apart from the mental health some of my takeaways are try to study i know everybody has already friends study methods but try to study as well with like-minded people you'll realize when you're studying medicine that you you may try to know everything but you're not going to know everything and that is why they say that you're practicing as a doctor because there will always be new knowledge and there will always be things that you need to know that you're not going to know so study groups really help usually i study with my friend um when i will call her name <laughs> but you just study with one person but if, if, if even if it is that it's just one person or a group and you can share information because me might say okay fine by this by this in the liver and then somebody might come and contradict that or they might come and they give me additional information that bile can break down fatty acids and so forth and so forth right you know you're getting more knowledge by just sharing in a group setting so that's something that you guys can look into as well as it relates to studying always 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 try to review what you did in class because you reach a point where you realize that if everything is a pile upon you one time Especially when it is that you study in a different country and you might have to study a language as well So you have to be able to balance learning that language and then working on your core subjects as well So it's really important that you try to review what it is that you did in class that day so that you can at least build on the knowledge, right? For me, time management is everything So I always try to work on a schedule and a lot of times we set so unrealistic schedule because we want to study for the world day and take five minute break you know say so you go to the break and go and check your instagram and come back so stop lying to yourself all right set realistic goals for yourself so set a schedule that you feel like you can work through if i even you go check your feed for okay six minutes and you come off turn off the phone you go drink a little water walk around your room stretch a little bit you understand watch a little tun, 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 a little tiktok video something just ease your mind and you know a schedule that's not too tedious and as you go through you kind of find what works for you in medical school so it just it's trial and error until you find what really sticks and i think my second to last or my last thing might be try never to compare yourself to anybody else i know it's almost inevitable because you go always wrong you know like who's at the top and so on for it and blah 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 but at the end of the day guys you're all here or we're all here to get a degree right and it could be a last you could be at the last of the class and you pass to get a degree but you have a degree right and somebody could be at the top with the highest honors but you're both the doctors at the end of the day and you're going to go out there and you're still going to apply yourself wholeheartedly and do your very best what you find when you compare yourself to others is that you, you kind of get this like this imposter syndrome thing again where you know will i ever be good enough can i be good enough as this person you can only be as good as you are right you're one of a kind you know god made you beautiful and god made you unique or whosoever your supreme being is they made you who you are and how you are so you can only try to be the very best version of yourself so just know that if it is that you decide to pursue a career in medicine you're going to have to apply yourself wholeheartedly but do it for the love and do it for the passion and just know that you're worthy and that you're great and you're going to be an awesome doctor so if it is that you guys have any questions, any concerns, you can always message me. If you don't want to leave a comment, you can send me a DM on Instagram, on the King Enthusiast page, 
Roman.Leon page or anywhere but if you can even hear it in my voice this was, this was a very emotional video for me to do because honestly like I you know I can speak I speak a lot you know like for a crowd I can deliver a speech but like when it comes to like things that like me speaking about like my even my academics and you know how hard I have to work in school it's not something that I speak about a lot because I always feel that like, you know your work should just speak for itself so it was <laughs> it took a lot of courage for, for me to come and do this video but I really want to share with you guys because I know me know the other me alone I go through certain things but sometimes we might not know even where to look so I kind of want to you know be that maybe that voice or that person who you can say okay you know he's going through it as well and maybe if he could go through it and you know come out maybe I can also you know find the strength to, to persevere and to push through so thank you guys so much for watching this video and if you want to see more videos you can subscribe to my channel turn on post notifications and follow me on all my social media platforms i'll leave the links in the description box below and until next time guys thank you so much and love you love you love you